WL Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the world. Now you're probably wondering, why should I watch over here instead of any of the other channels? And that's because over there, they don't care about what you have to say. They say this all the time, they talk down to us, they think we're just a bunch of clowns on YouTube, Twitter, but I think it's the opposite. I think we know exactly what we're talking about. So I read every single comment. So if you think what I'm saying is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, let me know in the comments below. If you think what I'm saying is the most amazing thing, then definitely please let me know. Either way, let's get into some discussions, let's get into some fights, but Ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and it's turning into something truly, truly special. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're all excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. So without further ado, let's get to it. We're watching a clip of The Hurt with Colin Cowherd um, talking about Patrick Mahomes versus Brock Purdy. There's been a lot of talk lately about Brock Purdy being right a game manager and there's this big back and forth between you know what does a game manager even mean and is it even a, such a bad thing and <clears throat> the truth is is that game, being a game manager gets a bad rep right really ultimately what you want and need is to be able to be both you need to be able to be a playmaker a game breaker and um a game manager i would say that a lot of really good players um in the nfl who've had a lot of success had game management part of their game you know part of what made them special was their ability to minimize making mistakes so being a game manager is not a negative thing i think a lot of times we see game being a game manager mean that you're incapable of doing big things and that's not always the case granted there are definitely some game managers where all they can is manage a game right they can't do the big plays in fact it makes me think of when um peyton manning won his last super bowl right like he was hardly he was a shell of himself. He could do nothing. I think he threw the ball like 12 times or something like that. So, you know, he was a game manager there, but he game managed away to a Super Bowl. But again, when you're a game manager, you need a lot of pieces around you to succeed or you rely on your defense um, or you just know that you have to just do the, the minimum threshold to get the lead because if you push it too far, you can't you can't rely on your team to be able to make the bigger plays, which then puts you into danger. And I think um, that's what we see with um, some of these other quote unquote game managers. But let's see what he has to say with regards to Patrick Mahomes. 40 put him in the all time ish class five, six, seven, eight, Elway, Marino, Brady, Manning. But when we evaluate him, he entered the league with such a bang. Remember his first year starting 50 touchdown passes? First year, rookie year, really, really starting. Uh, only Brady and Peyton Manning had done that. There was the left-handed throw, the sidearm throws, the 60-yard launches with ease, uh, the Houdini escapes under pressure, and he won a ton. So that's what we initially saw. That's what we believe he is. I've said this, though, about Mahomes and Michael Jordan. The great thing about Michael Jordan, much of Michael Jordan's game was highly predictable. Mid-range, scored 20 of his four of his 32 points about three to four times a game he'd do something truly elite that only mj could do and that has always been the secret sauce with mahomes he doesn't miss the easy stuff he hits all his layups uh and believe me that's that's like 13 to 15 completions a game if he goes you know 24 for 32 but here's what he's become adding to that and this is with a weak receiving core, the weakest receiving core of his career. Saw this stat this weekend, PFF. Patrick Mahomes had zero turnover-worthy plays in the playoffs. But he also avoids minor mistakes. He already led the NFL record. All right, wait, let's take a closer look at this. Patrick Mahomes had zero turnover-worthy plays in the playoffs, but he also avoids minor mistakes. He already led the regular season with the lowest rate of negatively graded dropbacks 10.3 percent during the playoffs he brought this down to 6.3 so far brock purdy's rate of negatively graded dropbacks is 23 percent in the postseason would have been the worst rate of all qbs with 200 plus dropbacks in the regular season all right so a lot of you brock purdy truthers out there are going to take some issues with that um Again, as I've stated, and I guess I'm just going to have to keep stating this, is I am not a Brock Purdy hater. I think Brock Purdy is a good quarterback. Um, I think he has potential to be one day a great quarterback. But it's these types of stats that may, you need to 
step on the brakes a little bit for Brock Purdy. And again, I know a lot of people, what they're going to say is this is only a second year and he just got it. He was just injured and all that. Yes, that's all true and all valid, right? Because it, the whole thing is, is like, well, who, who, why do we, why are we expecting him just to be perfect right out the gate? But the truth is, is that majority of these quarterbacks, a lot of these quarterbacks really show something ultra special from the very beginning, like what Patrick Mahomes is is talking to, you know, like Patrick Mahomes did, like Colin brought up. And I guess the thing is, is that if you're going to come out the gate and say that Brock Purdy is like a top five quarterback and has potential to be better than Joe Montana and all these other quarterbacks, then you have to be great right out the gate. If you're going to make those comparisons, if you, and that's the problem right now, everyone is trying to make Brock Purdy something that he's not. That's not to say that he can't become those things, but if we're, it seems like we're forcing this conversation right now. And if you want to force that conversation, that's fine. But then we have to then really look at what we're seeing. Then we have to dig deeper. We have to look beyond just the superficial stats, which is, you know, what this, um, advanced analytic is, is pointing out. And also just what the eye test shows you. I mean, just look at the last two playoff games. So again, we can give Brock Purdy the benefit of the doubt and say, okay, listen, this is only his second year. He's going to get better. All this, that's fine. And I agree with that. But then we have to stop saying that he's, you know, like the second best quarterback, only second to Mahomes in the NFL. Or that we have to stop saying that he's better than Joe Montana. We have to stop making all these leaps and saying, well, like, listen, he's amazing. He's brilliant. He's going to be better than Tom Brady. And a lot of people are saying, it seems split. Some people are saying no one's having that conversation, while other people are saying everyone's having that conversation. So it, it seems to be, um, really depends on what type of media you're, you're digesting. Because again, I have plenty of comments in the, in the, on any of my Brock Purdy videos of people telling me how amazing Brock Purdy is, how he's the best, how he is comparable to Patrick Mahomes and this and that. Um, and then you have other people that say no one's saying that. And it's like, but they are. This conversation, it just keeps kind of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And again, if this is your first time checking out a video of me, like I have lots of videos where I talk about me liking Brock Purdy. And I think Brock Purdy showed me something really special that not a lot of players have in the NFL. Um, you know, the fortitude, the, the mental resilience to be down, to have a bad start to a game, but still be able to come back. Brock Purdy has proven to do that. And only a few quarterbacks have in the NFL right now. And that's really only Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, uh, Joe Burrow, and um, Josh Allen and Matthew Stafford. Outside of that, all the other quarterbacks have, for the most part, crumbled in the pressure or they just haven't had the opportunity to show, you know, to, to plead their case. Um, and when we've seen Brock Purdy do it, but at the same time, a lot of the, 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 the issues that Brock Purdy had to overcome were self inflicted, which is okay. Cause that still shows a resilience that you can make mistakes and still bounce back. Patrick Mahomes has had some bad starts to games, but then he's had like some brilliant finishes. Um, and so we would have to see that more from Purdy. But when you look at these stats, these numbers that were, you know, highlighted by, by, um, Patrick Mahomes, that just shows you what how Patrick Mahomes isn't forcing the you know isn't forcing things downfield. He's not forcing. He's not trying to impose his will on another team because he knows that he can't right now. He knows that he has a weaker offense, the weakest offense that he's personally ever had in the NFL. So I feel as though him and Andy Reid have been very strategic with what they're trying to accomplish. They're trying to do everything that is all high percentage, minimize risk, minimize turnovers. And that's been their solution to the game, you know, to winning. Excuse me. That's been the solution. Brock Purdy, on the other hand, has elite offensive weapons around him. Elite offensive weapons. And that's the thing. That is why Brock Purdy continues to get questioned because it's like, dude, you have Shanahan, who's one of the best coaches in the NFL. You have Christian McCaffrey, who's the best running back. You have Kittle, who's probably the best tight end currently right now. Not of all time, but I think even Kelsey said that Kittle's playing, you know, the, is the best tight end in the league this season. Um, and you have Ayuk. You have, um, I'm probably forgetting, you know, Debo Samuel, obviously, who's absolutely amazing. Like, you have these insane weapons. Which Patrick Mahomes, to a degree, had in years past. But Travis Kelsey and um, Tyreek Hill. And when he did that, it was like, oh my God, this is like otherworldly, right? This is absolutely amazing. You could not watch his games and be and say anything but Patrick Mahomes is like absolutely brilliant and is about to take over the world. 
you have not seen that from Brock Purdy. And so that is why he continues to get this pushback of like everyone saying how amazing he is. Because yes, he's had some really good games and some great moments, but you would expect higher moments with those weapons and that and that team. You would expect it to be even more dominant, more impressive, and also not having these, you know, negatively neg- negatively graded dropbacks. I mean, he's over double that of Patrick Mahomes. He's actually triple in the playoffs because uh, Patrick Mahomes during the playoffs is 6.3. Um, Brock Purdy is 23. So that's nearly uh, four times as much. Regular season with the lowest rate of what they call negatively graded dropbacks, 10%. During the playoffs, he's got it down to 6.3. Conversely, Brock Purdy's rate of negatively graded dropbacks, 23% in the playoffs so far for two home games, by the way, would be the worst rate of all quarterbacks with 200 dropbacks in the season. So let me let me add to that. So, so Mahomes is not throwing it further or more often left-handed. He's just throwing it smarter. But to really contextualize those numbers, the gap between Mahomes and Purdy, Purdy played two home games was a favorite in both, and faced two really bad defenses. Detroit's egregiously bad, and Green Bay's hit-and-miss bad. Mahomes against the number four defense at their place, Buffalo, and against the number one defense, Baltimore. Well, that's not fair because everyone knows, except for diehard uh, Chiefs fans, that the Bills' defense was decimated. So to say that that was a number four defense, that's just not true. They were technically, but not those players. Those players weren't there. They were all banged up, injured, not even playing, signing people up off of the street practice squad. So no, 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 no to that. Um, Against the, uh, what do you call it? Against the Ravens. Yeah, absolutely. But let's not pretend like that was some super impressive offensive uh, performance. Again, he managed that game. He was a game manager for that game. Which, is, which was the right game plan because the Ravens were not scoring or weren't doing that much. So again, the game plan was like, we need to just minimize our mistakes. We know that this is a good defense. Let's not give them any momentum. Let's not turn the ball over. Let's do all high percentage throws. But when we need a big throw, we can make it. And that was when you saw Travis Kelsey make a couple, two, like two or three amazing catches. The one where he had to like really like dive across his body, the one touchdown that he had. And then the pass to, I forget who it was, to end the game, you know, before the two minute warning was like an absolute beautiful throw. And again, that is the brilliance of not only Patrick Mahomes, but also Andy Reid's uh, play calling. You know, to me, it goes hand in hand with them together. At their place, both defenses thrive on turnovers. And he had zero, zero turnover worthy plays. Not at home like Purdy, not against bad defenses. No, no, no. On the road against elite defenses. By the way, he was also really good against Miami, but that was at home, albeit minus 27 degrees. So Mahomes now is the only great quarterback in the league where you get this remarkable upside with virtually no mistakes. It would be like having the best power hitter in baseball and he never strikes out. It's it's and I'm I know what you're saying. You're just picking on Purdy. No, I'm not. But you have to contextualize it. Ravens defense there. Buffalo's defense there. Minus 27 degrees. Zero, zero turnover worthy plays, and only six percent out of a hundred of negatively graded dropbacks. That is beyond. That is that's the best driver on the PGA Tour. Also the best putter. It was called Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods made more clutch pots when he was on that tear, and he was the best guy off the tee. And, he- and so, again, that's what highlights Patrick Mahomes' greatness. And again, I can't emphasize this enough. Andy Reid. Andy Reid knows exactly what he's doing, and he's been doing this for years, of understanding the limitations of a team and not forcing it. That's what that's one of the best things that Andy Reid does. And again, I watched this firsthand when he had the Eagles. Okay, when he had the Eagles coach for years. And he had Donovan McNabb, who was, you know, at the time everyone thought was this great quarterback, but then when you kind of get some distance from it, you're like, Yeah, he was a really good quarterback, fun, exciting, interesting, unique at the time. He was this 
big, strong, you know, um, imposing quarterback who can kind of run, but also could throw. He threw like multiple touchdowns with like a broken leg or broken foot. I forget, you know, um, but had limited wide receivers. And so Andy Reid was so good at maximizing the what you had within a team despite those limitations and didn't force things to do you have a lot of coaches that try to force their 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 scheme their their game plan onto a team that can't handle it that's just not good enough and so Andy Reid knows what he's doing and, and again a couple years ago when Patrick Mahomes started to go astray and start throwing a lot of interceptions and was forcing the ball downfield and probably started to get high on his own supply understandably so because he's like oh my god look how amazing I am Andy Reid was like, whoa, 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 let's let's think about this right now. Let's be smarter. I know you can throw an 80-yard bomb. I know you can scramble for 25 minutes and then still throw, you know, a sidearm perfect throw. I know you can do that, and that's great. And when the game needs you to do it, do it. But let's avoid that. Let's not make that your default. And that's the difference between uh, a Patrick or um, like a Josh Allen, right? They're like, forcing Josh Allen to do this all day, every day, even Joe Burrow to a degree. Um, and even Justin Herbert, who can't do all the fancy things that say um, Patrick Mahomes can do, but is still asked. Justin, Justin Herbert's like asked to throw the ball more than any other quarterback in the NFL. They're just like, go, 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 go. And so again, what makes Andy Reid so brilliant is like, listen, I got Patrick Mahomes. I know he's absolutely amazing at everything that we ever ask him to do, but let's imagine if we can build a game plan where our greatest player we have, one of the greatest players to ever play in the NFL, if we can create a game plan where we have to ask from him to do less, how can we lose, right? Like if you don't need your superhero to be a superhero, that means you have things under great control. Think of it like this. Think of it like a Marvel movie, right? And this is going to sound silly, but just follow me. For anyone who likes superheroes, you know, any of that type of stuff. Imagine if you could create the world where you only needed the police. You didn't need the superheroes. You don't need the Avengers. You don't need that. It's a lot safer world. World. It's a lot more manageable. But if you're living in this crazy chaotic world where you constantly need the Avengers, where there's aliens coming down and God knows what else is coming down, you know, it's like, well, that's a, that's a crazy, more chaotic world to live in, okay? And only people who are really bored and hate themselves want to live in that world. But so, so again, to me, that's like a, a great illustration of, Patrick Mahomes and what Andy Reid and their game plan. It just shows the brilliance of also just the Kansas City Chiefs as a whole. And the players understand it too, because they all want to win. And it's the culture too, because you don't have other players carrying on saying, we want the ball more. You don't have receivers saying, come on, give us the ball more. This is ridiculous. Like they understand the game plan and they understand that this is what's leading them to win. And that, and Travis Kelsey isn't complaining saying, what the heck I want my touches or what the heck, you know, my touchdowns are down this year, whatever it may be. It's just like, this is what we need to do. And same thing with Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is going for it. He's not like, what the heck, man? My pace now, you know, for touchdowns and all these other things are, are down compared to the other years. And one year I threw like 50 touchdowns. Come on, I can do that every year. But he also knows, you know what? What's more important to me is getting eight Super Bowls. So again, to me, just Patrick Mahomes' willingness and humbleness to accept the game plan and, and, and understanding the maturity is what makes Patrick Mahomes so special. And Brock Purdy... I think has the ability to have that same special level of mentality. I'm not going to say that he's going to be able to do the same things that Patrick Mahomes can do, but I think the mentality uh, and the intangibles are very underrated. And I think they're underrated in Brock Purdy, but I think they come from a different place from Brock Purdy because they come from a place of him in, you know, unable to do some of the things that Patrick Mahomes can do. So you need to do those things. That's why Tom Brady, you know, Tom Brady had to study tape and understand defenses and pre-snap reads and all this type of stuff. That's what all, a big part of what made Tom Brady so special because Tom Brady couldn't run around and scramble and do things that say, you know, at the time, Michael Vick or even a McNabb, you know, since they played more time. I, you know, obviously we can use Patrick Mahomes as an example, but they didn't play majority of their careers together, at least in their primes. So, you know, like what made, what made Tom Brady special was these other things. It wasn't just his pure physicality. Um, and, and so I think that's something that a Brock Purdy will have to rely on because as of right now, he is a smaller player. That's just a fact. Um, 
certain elements get the best of him like rain and stuff right so it's like unless it's like perfect weather then he kind of struggles which has been consistently shown now so far in his career um and also the the adversity factor um he's going up against this is going to be a perfect example right now and it might be a, an unfair test for purdy but this is going to be a perfect example because now he is going up at the highest moment in, in sports in nfl the super bowl of course and he's going up against a true great defense he hasn't had to have that so far. And a lot of this is also now, just as I praised Andy Reid for making Patrick Mahomes brilliant, a lot of this is also on Shanahan. Shanahan has to put Brock Purdy in a position to succeed. And the last thing that I want to say, well, you know what? I'll save this for another video because I see that I'm, I'm going to be doing a first things first video um, after this. And they also are talking about Brock Purdy. Um, Brock Purdy was called a game manager, which I want to address. And so I'll save that for the next video um, because I have some more thoughts specifically around that and some other thoughts that I thought about from the last couple playoff games with regards to, Bl to Brock Purdy, which I actually blame Shanahan more than Brock Purdy for some of the issues that uh, the 49ers faced. Um but those are my thoughts on this one. Um, I would absolutely love to hear yours. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you think Patrick Mahomes is a game manager right now? And is that such a bad thing? Has he been managing the game so far these past three playoff games? Um, and how do you think he'll play in the Super Bowl? Will he continue this game management style? Or is he going to ball out throwing for four touchdown passes, 300 plus yards? Would love to hear your thoughts on this one. Um, we only have one more week to the Super Bowl, and I truly, truly can't wait. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. As I said, we are building an amazing community here, and I would love to see you part of it. And please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps with the visibility and the algorithm, and I would truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you so much, and see you next time.